Hey YouTube, what's up? Hey YouTube. Pretty much none of the stuff we did last week is on YouTube yet, so maybe we said well, hey YouTube for nothing. The whole thing is that, you know, we were counting down to the end of the counting Kickstarter, down. And now it's ended, but if you are still DTF, the books are available on PayPal. But yeah, man. The other videos we put up, you know, or on Twitch. SteveWitchman.com. Who knows? They're just going to have countdowns for nothing. All right. I'm going to start. All right. Hey everybody, what's up? Hey, how's it going? We're here. It's time for some more heavy cream. Welcome Four to the Twitch viewers street. resubscribed while we were away. What are you? What are you nuts? Hey, you have to be fucking kidding. What me. are you crazy? Are you joking with me right now? I can't see who those people are because Twitch doesn't fucking let me. But my God, dick. thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. We love you. You're beautiful people. Amazing. Um, hi, it's me. I'm Dave Raposa. Hey, I'm Dan Warren. I always forget that there's probably people watching this. <laughs> so here's the deal. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no. I know what you're thinking. Wow, you guys are like a bad relationship. Last week you were streaming multiple times every day, and we got used to it, and then you just disappeared. It's our bed. I'm not going to pretend like that was the wrong thing to do. Basically, in the last minute, last day, the Kickstarter got way bigger than we ever intended it to be. And it took a little bit of time to sort everything out after the uh, campaign ended. There yeah. were a lot of flagged orders, a lot of canceled orders, because cards got rejected and stuff. And it took about a week to sort everything out, make sure the right people found out they could back on PayPal, get everything figured out, process the fees. But, uh, yeah, we're here now. Yeah, I didn't even get to talk about what happened after the night that, uh, we were funded. Go ahead. Well, that night, I drank a bunch of, uh, wine, because we had wine in, like, the, in, like, the VRBO. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's called. Vacation and, um, rental by owner. Yeah, whatever you call it. So, there's a bunch of wine in there. We celebrated, just drank all of it, and then ran out of that. And I drank uh, pumpkin beer right after the wine. And that day, we had eaten mostly seafood. Oh, so this. I forgot about this. <laughs> I violently threw up all night. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like, project, like, exorcist vomit. Like, vomit that went... Like the kind of vomit that you scream through, which I haven't done <laughs> in a long, long, long time. We go every time, every time the vomit comes out, you go, ah! Ah! just like that, just like hundred so, percent like that. Because it's so violent and fast, it was super gross. I threw up, I don't even know how many times, like twenty-five times or something. I kept drinking water. And laying on the floor of the bathroom, and just yeah, it was it was deadly. So good. I was like, we got funded. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Uh, great. Melvin Chanar subscribed for four months in a oh row. Melvin. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Love you so much, man. Uh, cream, cream. Ricky says, what were the final numbers? You can go on the Kickstarter and see. I think it was 385.7? Yeah, we we raised, um... 385,710, I think. Something like that. And, uh... In total, since we opened the PayPal store, because we lost a lot of um, backers due to like errors, we, so lost we lost about four or five thousand. We lost about one percent of the backers. 
Yeah, so so we lost about four or five thousand from that, but with the PayPal stuff, we're right at I think I think we're at three eighty seven or three eighty eight. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty good. It's mm-hmm. really. Good. And you know, then we obviously we're putting all that towards printing the books. So Gino's but, Grande. Have you seen? Have you watched Doctor Strange? Yeah, I saw it. Did you see but, it? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. Dave hasn't seen it. I want to see it, but just haven't yet. Haven't made the time. How's it going for you? For me? Can you... I don't know. Crazy stuff happened to Dan. What? Just the other day. I don't know if I can talk about anything. I don't know what you're referencing. There's some stuff I can talk about and some I can't. Well, you can talk about what happened at the gym. Oh I mean, yeah, I can talk about that. I mean, that's pretty. I went to my weekly. Um, I went to my weekly. Uh, I, I go see my personal trainer three times a week, and um, I went in for my, God, what Wednesday session? Yeah, it was yesterday, right? Time, yeah. Time is time is weird right now. I'm like nocturnal again, freelancing stuff. Um, yeah, I went in for my one of my weekly sessions and um as i walked in there were people kneeling around on the floor and i was like what's going on and a guy i guess about five minutes beforehand had collapsed on the treadmill because his heart stopped and he just died and um a bunch of the trainers there were trying to revive him by giving him cpr and stuff and they couldn't and the paramedics showed up took the guy away um and I thought my training session was just going to be canceled, and my trainer was like, he wouldn't have wanted us to, to stop everything on his behalf. Trust me. He was like, so <laughs> go back to the uh, go back to the basketball court, and uh, we're going to throw the punching bag around. And I was like, <laughs> what? And as I'm walking back to the basketball court with him to throw the punching bag around, he goes, worst ways to go. Trust me. Over in Iraq, I saw a lot of things. Going off on a treadmill, not the worst thing in the world. He would have been happy. Oh, what the fuck, dude? <sighs> I'm getting out of here. I just keep, I just keep dying. I don't know why I thought I could that's, take these. That makes me laugh a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's great. Funny. I just love how like casual he was about it. Yeah, me too. Oh, I like no, it. Yo. He's like he would have wanted this. What? The greatest. Oh yeah, no, he wouldn't have wanted us to stop. <laughs> Let's head out back and throw the punching bag around. Yeah. Bristlebane1000 says, Gotta say, thank you guys for introducing me to Brigador. The game kicks ass, and the audiobook and soundtrack do as well. Well, Hugh, you'd appreciate that. Fantastic. It's a great game. I um, I started playing it. And just to like get the hang of it, I was like, I don't want to go on the stream and just blow ass at this game like completely. I don't, I don't want to misrepresent the game since the guy, you know, put that beautiful secret in it. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna try and get all right at this game, but it's hard. It, it's like it's really cool, but it's hard. It's, it's, it's the controls are really difficult. It's killing with, me that I haven't played that or Owlboy yet. You can get Brigador from Mac. I know, I just haven't had time. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. You can download it from Mac. If you got a Mac and you got Steam, you can go get Brigador. And there's a special, I don't want to say what, but a certain blue skeleton. A certain blue skeleton. Might be there. somewhere in there. Man, I'm like. I don't know if any. I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen it. I am so pumped for Planet Earth 2. It's incredible. Oh, like it's the yeah. only thing well, I'm thinking video about. Video went viral, so it's the only thing I'm thinking about. I know. I'm just so uh, pumped to see that. Yeah, I really want to see it. I really want to see that. I mean, I hope it's. As, I mean, if it's even close to as good as the first one, then mm -hmm. it's gonna be great. I mean, I wish I could watch it just Can't right wait. now, but. I feel like I, I should wait until I can have the, the, the 4K experience. I'm going to wait until all of it's out and then just watch all of it on, like, Christmas. 
Mm -hmm. That's like what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna eat Christmas dinner with my family and then watch the entire thing in one sitting. Yeah. Can't wait. Oh, I've never, like, that fucking lizard scene was cooler than anything I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, I I had a good time watching watching Kim watch it. <laughs> oh, did After she? I'd already oh, seen that it. must have been great. Was yeah, she freaking out? Oh, go! Go! <laughs> go! And there's so much drama in that scene. That I it's know. Like, I don't know, even I was like... <laughs> If anyone, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, go watch the Iguana vs. Snakes clip for Planet Earth 2. Hans Zimmer did the soundtrack. He did? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions in the chat, please do uh, at Steve Lichman. And so we can check it out. Yeah, AB when I was... Jacobs asks, Dan, how many chicken thighs are you going to buy with the proceeds? Oh, Steve? I mean, let's do the math, so... Okay, so let's let's say just for the sake of maximum walls, because this is the internet, we take the full three hundred and eighty. <laughs> let's call it three hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars. Sure. For three dollars, you can get. Well, for two dollars, you can get four chicken thighs if you go to the right store. How much? For four for for two dollars, you can get four chicken thighs. So how many times does two dollars go into three hundred and eighty-six thousand? Uh, I thought you were saying it was four dollars, so I did that math. Well, just cut that in half. What do you got? Ninety-six thousand five hundred times four. I had a cooperator, and I still died. 386,000 chicken thighs. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm doing. That's a thousand chicken thighs. That's a thousand chicken thighs every day for a year. A dollar chicken thighs. Plus some. I like how you got the exact amount. The exact, yeah. There you go. That's how many chicken thighs I'm buying. You could live for like 10 lifetimes on that was, many chicken thighs. I was talking on uh, One Fantastic Week about how when I had no money, um, when we were, you know, both going through a rough spot, remember how I had to just survive on chicken thighs because I couldn't afford anything else? <laughs> and I would talk to you about it and you'd laugh. You were like, buy a rotisserie chicken. And I was like, dude, for the cost of rotisserie chicken, I can get like 12 chicken thighs. What are you, what are you, rich? Yeah, it's like your fucking currency was chicken thighs. Yeah, it's all I That's ate. how you thought about life. I ate chicken thighs and frozen veggies. That was it. It's fifteen dollars to go to the movies. Yeah, you know how many chicken thighs that is? Yeah, I used to say that <laughs> all like the time. All there was. was tons of chicken thighs. Why would I go to the movies? That's like twenty chicken thighs. Uh, Sometimes I'd go to the grocery store and they wouldn't have chicken thighs, and I wouldn't eat. I'd have to find something else because <laughs> I couldn't afford chicken breasts. What are you rich? You just wouldn't need anything else because it became an addiction. You needed the thighs. I had to stay on the budget every week. I remember one week I did <laughs> Dan, buy... Dan, <laughs> Dan the thigh highs. Yeah, the thigh high. Yeah. Always oh, chasing it. One week I did buy rotisserie chicken and I remember I boiled it after I ate the meat off it and tried to make soup out of it to save even more money. Good times. Did I tell you about my new book on doing your own taxes as a freelancer? No, you got a book for that? Yeah, it's called The Point of No Return. Whoa, that's a great fucking name for that book. <laughs> did you make that up? Yeah, it did. Oh, that's, I'm really mad you made that up. I just up. thought of it. <laughs> I'm really mad you made that up. Because yeah. that would be a great fucking title for that book. <laughs> yeah, for that book be a great title for a book that doesn't exist. You spend all your money. All the money that would go towards taxes the on point business no expenses. return. What a yeah. great fucking title that'd be. We can't do one star flashlight reviews. I'd laugh too hard. I'd wake every, <laughs> I'd wake everybody up. I know. 
You know what? I, w I wish I could share the video I took the other night of when I was trying to sleep with food poisoning and the saxophone was being... <laughs> So after my brother's wedding, oh yeah, my brother got married since I last talked to everybody. My brother got married. It was really great wedding. The day after the wedding, a bunch of us went out to lunch and uh, everybody who got the noodles at this place we went to got food poisoning. I think it was the chicken because it was in the noodles. But anyway, everybody who got that dish got food poisoning. So like really, really bad food poisoning. So um, <laughs> I was trying to sleep. And I was just feeling absolutely horrible. I had shit and puked like crazy a couple hours prior. And as I'm laying there, all of a sudden, in the apartment above me here, <laughs> So immediately, I go to my phone, and I start taking videos and just sending them to Dave. Just through Facebook Messenger, as many as I can get off before it stops. And I just, yeah. I don't know, I couldn't believe it. It kept going for so long. No, it's incredible. So long, at like close to midnight too. Super late. The it's just pure hatred. The people next door um, were texting me saying, "Can you please tell uh, the woman who lives above you to stop playing her fucking saxophone? Because we can <laughs> hear it next door." Oh God, it's a good time. You were like, "How do you think I feel?" I was like, "What am I gonna do?" It sounds like it's like in the room with me. <laughs> Oh my god. Like, Aiden's bad, but if Aiden played the saxophone, oh, yeah. he'd be dead. He'd be, he'd be fucking dead. Free concert every day. My favorite thing is that, like, I'm trying to be quiet right now because she's the one that texts me and is like, Hey, I have to teach in the morning. Please be quiet. I'm like, you put on a saxophone concert. What, are you crazy? Yeah, you, you don't get to do that? What, like, are you nuts? Dan and Dave, do you have any advice on how to utilize Reddit and Imgur platforms effectively for exposing your work? Depends on the work, I think. Yeah. I mean, unless you're a part of the community. I think that you have to become, like, a member. Like, you gotta become somebody who contributes a lot. This might and be... you gotta be part of, like, a niche group and not, like, a general group. Like, when you post to Reddit and stuff like that, it's gotta be a focused thing. It can't be all over the place. And in terms of something like Imager, if you have like a funny, like, if, if you have like a one subject comic or something like that, or something that's like really interesting or like a how-to kind of thing, yeah, then you can get like one post and have that work. But rarely do you ever see things on Imager that are just galleries, like fan art will do yeah. that sometimes because that's for everyone. But if it's like... like your personal work, that's pretty rare. Like, it's, Imager's basically built for memes, so, like, if you're closer to that or some kind of comedy thing, even if it's not just a meme, it'll probably work a little better for you. Yeah. Six foot Ewok one, just subscribe with Twitch Prime! Prime cream. Whoa. I haven't had Jeez. any of that Prime cream in a little while. Uh, Thank Gina's you grande. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Janice Grande asks, what is your typical schedule like? Um, I mean, it's been a little weird since the Kickstarter finished, since we've kind of been scattered. But yeah. if it were normal, um, I'd just be doing pages and stuff. Yeah. I'd just be doing, you know, I mean, I still work on things. Like today, I had a weird day because I only had like, two hours in between the things I had to do and I just I don't know whenever that happens to me nothing gets done because I never really get to get into a no, full swing yeah you don't get the momentum yeah you don't get into like work mode fully so on a normal day I'll work I don't know from when I wake well I'd say like 11 a.m. to 7 or 8 p.m. I guess something like that it's pretty normal and then i try and get a lot done in that time and that's pretty much it because there's so much to do all the time i feel like that it's oh. just i don't know it's constant uh but yeah that's my schedule pretty much work from home work all day yeah hang out i'm getting ready to go into a into an internet purge i think it already kind of started 
Oh yeah. I'm gonna. Pause. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm. I'm noticing that my productivity is down like almost fifty percent the past couple of weeks since the Kickstarter started. Mm-hmm. And uh, I need to just like cut social media completely because <laughs> I normally work an eight to ten hour day, and lately it's been like a five. Like I'm getting five hours of work done, even though I'm sitting here for the ten hours. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, too much, too much distraction. Yeah. I mean, all that stuff's just, that being said, because of how things um, are going now, like so many people are on Twitter right now, it's a good Mm -hmm. time to post your artwork and share stuff. Yeah, it's true. It's definitely true. Um, People are looking at it, you know. Yakora Art asked, is there any specific site that's good? I mean, in terms of specific sites, the best is still DeviantArt. Weird as it is, I mean, it's still the biggest art site. It still has the most traffic. You still get the most offers, and you still have the most people see your stuff from just DeviantArt. I mean, there's other sites, but, I mean, that is, in terms of getting a return for what you're putting up, that's still, bar none, the biggest site. Yeah. Um, and Waldinger says, will Dave or Dan die from alcohol or food poisoning, respectively, before we ever get to see Volume 2 of Steve? I mean, yeah, most likely. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely possible. I'm not going to rule anything I'd out of it. I'd love to die. Had food poisoning twice this year. I'm not going to rule it out. <laughs> forest. Hey, Forest. Hey, what's How up, you doing? Forest? Cutie. Congratulations on your, uh, I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about. I've been seeing stuff from that game you're working on, though. Looks good, buddy. So, Forrest asks, Dave, how do you balance a schedule like that and also have your wife not hate you? Well, I mean, it's not really that weird. She it's knew like, she was marrying. But that being said, it's like, it's not like we to, don't do things. I just wanted you know to say I mean? that dumb movie line. I know. I just yeah. didn't want to acknowledge it's it. It's a real stupid movie line. Tired of it. She knew what she was getting into. <laughs> you old pair of balls. How do you deal with your um, husband being on the force all the time? Yeah. Mrs. Sergeant McCreary. You gotta talk to me about what you see. She knew what she was marrying. I can help you deal with it. You knew what this was before you got into this. What do you want me to tell you, Shelly? That I shot him in the fucking face. That I raped a kid? Now you're fucking, on duty? I shouldn't have done it. Now you're fucking crying. Yeah. You know what you were getting into. What do you want to hear there? Anyway, what was, in my cop car? What was the um, what's the question? <laughs> it says, how do you balance a schedule like that and also have your wife not hate you? Well, I mean, it's like a normal job, really. I mean, it's like, you know, she wouldn't hate me if I worked that kind of shift at a regular job. So, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like what yeah. everybody else puts up with anyway. She says, honey, can it's we... It's not like I work all day, every she, day. She says, honey, can we spend more time together? You're ignoring me. And Dave says, could you open the fridge and let me know if there's still food in there? Because there <laughs> won't be. Because there won't be if I have to stop fucking working. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. It's like we both know. It's like if we stop working, then we just don't have money. And we need we need money. You go, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you go turn on the heater? Does it work? It's because I'm doing my fantasy art. <laughs> Flip the kitchen table. Honey, why don't you come in here? <laughs> Do you see that? Do you know what that is? Do you know nothing of the Jewish religion? That's a golem. <laughs> um, a golem. <laughs> I hate that. And that's going to pay the bills. This golem? This is what gets your fucking pork chops. You fucking chicken thighs. You fucking yoga. I want to get in a Sopranos fight with my wife someday. Is this goblin enough for you? How about these trolls? Those, those classic Sopranos fights where they're just going at it. All the accents come out. Yeah. What you want to fucking talk about? I wonder uh, how many times across the entire series of The Sopranos he referred to his dick as a cannoli. <laughs> I mean, it was a lot. I know it's a lot. I just don't know how many. A fucking cannoli. Yeah. Uh, Genos Grande 
ask before you started working for Wizards of the Coast, did you work part time jobs while doing commissions or did you survive solely on commissions? It was just commissions. And yeah, I mean, you just kind of like live in the bad and just take as many on as humanly possible mm -hmm. until it makes enough money to pay the bills. I mean, that was pretty much it. It was like falling and just, just trying to grab everything you can before you hit the ground and go, ah, ah. Yeah, All right, just that's keep enough going. for now. I'm going to keep falling. <laughs> like it's every month was like a free fall to me and everything was like desperate where you're going. Cause are you going to pay me this? Are you going to pay me? Cause I did the work. You're going to pay me. Yep. Phantom. That was like every single month. So phantom cash. That's, yeah, that's what it is. I think that's kind of what it has to be. Yeah. It you definitely... gotta you gotta sit in the dirty gym for a while, working out, having a bad time. <laughs> mm -hmm. It gets you ready. Yeah, and then nothing's ever that bad again. And you go, yeah, I can do this. I can do whatever you ask. <laughs> oh, you can't pay me right now? Well, that's okay, because I have a thousand contingency plans. I've been through this. Oh boy, Tripwire so... says, do you think mm -hmm. AJ will finally complete his Kickstarter in 2017? I would say at this point, consider the Kickstarter complete, and maybe you'll get a surprise copy of his book in the mail someday. Yeah. I don't know. Like, he's he's close enough to done that I don't know what the holdup is. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully. If he, if he had the income, he could get it done today, yeah. tomorrow. It's just a matter like, of money. Like, in a weekend, he could do the whole thing. He's, You know, he just needs the extra money. Six foot money. Ewok one asks Dan, "How did you land the Transformers gig a while back?" Reason being, a lot of what you were doing looked to be fantasy work slash something similar to that. Oh, uh, that was a weird location job thing where a studio in Boston that works for Hasbro on a lot of their movie marketing stuff, even like they're doing like Star Wars Episode Eight stuff now. Um, they needed somebody who could go in house. They, because of the nature of the NDAs for Hasbro, they couldn't do remote because they didn't want it to leave their like internal server. They couldn't let the work leave the office, basically. So a mutual friend of the art director there and myself, uh, Mark Sheff, recommended. He said, the only two people I know in Boston are Dave and Dan. And Dave was working on something else. I, I can't remember what. I remember you saying that they reached out to you, too. Yeah, I was also just like completely unwilling to work yeah. in the studio. And uh, at the time, we, I think I mentioned this on Pete's thing the other day, we were trying to get Skull and Shark off the ground, and um, it would yeah. have been a lot easier to do that if we lived in the same place. So I took the job mainly as an opportunity to move to Boston, because it would have paid me enough money to be able to take six months off and just live there and work on Skull and Shark. Mm -hmm. And I called Dave. We had a long phone meeting about it, basically, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a hit. I'm going to take this job, move up to Boston, and then with that money, we can do Skull and Shark. But then Dave fell in love, so, you know. Yeah. Colorado bound. But, uh, did some cool Transformers. Not really. Yeah. They're not cool. He's got a, he's got a mouth full of knives. But no, yeah, that was a thing where, um, I had to do, like, uh, I didn't do an art test, which was weird. They basically were just like, yeah, you can render, come on in. Oh man. Uh, yeah, that was a weird job. It's like it's a team kind of thing, but yeah. also like I don't know. It's not the same as concept art. Right. It's, it's not the way it's like streamlined. They basically handed me like um they broke it up cuz it was a huge job. That's the weird thing about That's something that I'm I'm kind of glad I took the job just because it taught me so much in terms of how stuff works cuz I never realized how massive those fucking contracts are because you think about movies like Transformers, they only exist to sell the toys, basically. Like, that's why Hasbro's in charge. Like, those movies uh -uh. are just there to move figurines, toys, marketing, branding, like, crazy amounts of that. So that movie had, like, 20-something Transformers in it that had different forms and stuff and obviously transformed into different things. So the amount of work they had to do, they had to do two images for every Transformer, so it was like 60-something images total, fully rendered, and they had to be at like a 10,000, minimum 10,000 pixel high document at like 400 DPI, because like the stuff I did got put on the sides of trains, it got put on the sides of skyscrapers, like 
they need those images to be scalable to like a crazy degree. And I never had seen a team do something like that. So the way they did it was like, okay, Dan, you've got Optimus Prime and Grimlock. Okay, Anthony, you've got uh, whatever the Bugatti guy was, the samurai dude. And they just did that. They were like, you're going to do every Grimlock image because after you do one, the rest should be faster as a result. Here's all the Grimlocks we need. Go for it. And you just they just say we need minimum one a week. You have to finish one of these every week. It just has to, you have to. And you're like, okay. And yeah, that was that was the job. It was cool. I mean it was it was a weird way to work. Really, really weird way to work, because I'd never done anything with a team before, but yeah. I don't know. Probably never do it again, but it was interesting. And uh he was asking just before I get to the other questions. Um, he was asking what studio hired you if you don't mind me asking I used to live in Boston so I was just curious uh, their name is Pilot they're in the Boston Design Center which is a building in this huge uh, old 20's building in Southie in the, uh, the port area but yeah they're called Pilot Studios they just opened and expanded a, a bigger studio and I don't know if they're still hiring they were hiring a couple months ago though I've actually still got... I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. I'm probably just going to donate it to like a fucking daycare center or something. I've got a 15-foot Grimlock standee in a box just in my room. I've never taken it out and set it up. It's just there. <laughs> uh, Pin Shivik asks, How should I approach my first portfolio? I don't know anything about portfolios. How many pieces should I make? How to how do I make the pieces work together? And with what mentality should I go into it with? Sorry, so the question was how do I make a first portfolio? What pieces should I do and how do I make them work together? Basically. Yeah, like how to how to approach it. What do you do? It depends on what the portfolio is, but I mean, for mm -hmm. example, I'll say if you're making a fantasy art portfolio to get into doing RPGs. Um, like for example, if I didn't if I didn't work for Pathfinder and I wanted to get into doing Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons, uh, first find out what stuff you enjoy. I mean, are you a character person? Are you an illustration person? Are you like a a landscape person? Like for me, I was more of a character and design person. So I needed I knew off you know when I when I applied to them, I said okay, I'm gonna need five, minimum five character designs. I'm gonna need some items. I'm gonna need some portraits because that's the bulk of what they do. So you design the portfolio around what the job's gonna need you to do. So when they you know you don't want them to walk away wondering if you can do something. You want to show them you can do all the stuff that you know they are gonna want to see. So basically, if the idea is to get a job with the portfolio and not just put together a random portfolio, um, you want to tailor the portfolio to the needs of the job. And that's going to change, obviously, depending on the job you're going you're gonna to do. Um, I don't yep. know. Anything to say on that? Yeah, I would say one, one way I've started to kind of look at my own stuff again is kind of like... Uh, I almost approach character design now solely as if it were like a toy mm -hmm. and that helps me to do like um you know characters and stuff if that's what you're going for with the portfolio which you know i i, I would assume most people do that it's like you know you make up a portfolio for concept art or illustration mm -hmm. um but for me, I go into it thinking like, what's the most fun thing I can do within their world? Like, what is their world? Right. And what would be the most fun thing in, in my imagination? Like, what do I want from this? You also want to approach it that way because you don't want your work to look like everyone else that already works for them. The, no. thing, the thing you want to do is, is look at it in terms of, okay, what kind of edge can I bring to this thing that's already established that other people don't have so that's going to make them more likely to hire me? If you can do something unique with their IP, um, you're way more likely to get the job than someone yeah. who just looks like, you know. The amount yeah. of people that go into Pathfinder trying to get a job there that just copy Wayne Reynolds' style down to the T um, is really crazy. It's crazy how many people just assume that because he did their style guide for their Iconics that they want to hire another Wayne Reynolds, and it's like, they really don't. Like, 
it's good it's good to know that you can copy styles if they need you to do that at some point but it's it's not a good thing to go hey i'm i'm a cheaper version of someone you already have yeah one one thing i would say is uh, just you know this is just uh, random ideas but i would take like let's say you're going to work for i don't know just some certain video game company like you working for guys like 343 they're doing like another halo or something like that whoever's mm -hmm. doing halo now <clears throat> it's like go okay maybe like i want to work for them i like this kind of artwork but i don't necessarily love halo it's like then i would say like take something like that and plug in something else that you like yeah just combine two ideas what is something i definitely love have i know a lot about that i can bring to this world Mm -hmm. and use their design aesthetic to you know help recreate kind of their ip but still work within their limits like things like that can help you stand out you just don't want to do the same thing everybody else does you don't want to do what they already do yeah good but you want to do something that flows with it good example of that is like what makes doom cool isn't the space marines it's the hell stuff like, you know, yeah. you can take something boring like Space Marine that's been done a million times and mix it with something really weird and make something cool. Doom's, like, the ultimate example of that. Yeah, I mean, some sometimes it just doesn't matter. It's like you can just have fun. I think the worst thing you can do going into a portfolio is... Um, not have fun. Not Not have fun, but also, like, feel pressure and shitty about it. Like, it'll... Like, I used to do that with my portfolio stuff. I would sit there and, like, worry about it and stay focused only on, like, fundamentals. And I would freak myself out. Like, is this good enough? Whatever. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I didn't think about what was important and, like, the cool ideas. I didn't think about what I liked about it. I didn't think about, like, am I having fun doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, is this a job I could... Like, you owe it to the people that are going to hire you to like actually have fun with your work yeah because that's gonna the whole show, point it's of gonna show you on. You don't. like you need to look like you care yeah so i'd say basics of starting a portfolio is pick a pick a number i usually recommend 10 you can get away with five if you do really really solid pieces but 10 is a really good number for a well-rounded portfolio that isn't too big and isn't too small and then like you know break it down into what kinds of different stuff do you want to show if you're going to do a basic fantasy art portfolio, like if you wanted to work for Dungeons and Dragons, for example, just to stick on the theme from before, I would say probably five characters, three illustrations, two portraits. You know, like if you want to show a well-rounded amount of stuff, like, you know, and then of the five characters, you want to show a vast array with that subset. So, you know, have, you know male you know kind of standard warrior guy but make it cool and different then have female standard warrior girl make it cool and different show a couple of their races you know like do an elf and a dwarf but do something unique with them and then show some kind of monster thing because they're going to want you to do that stuff too so do like one of their dragon people or do like an orc thing but try to find a unique way to do all of them don't just do boring stuff that you've seen before because you think that's what they want to see try to do something unique with it but yeah, so pick a number, then pick how many of each thing that you're going to be doing you want to do in that portfolio, and then just kind of, you know, hammer them away. That's literally mm -hmm. exactly what I did when I decided I wanted to start working for those companies, and it, I mean, it, it worked. Hamos, I love you, but we're going to leave that for Facebook. Um, oh, is my... it politics? Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's enough of that going around. We don't need to with, contribute our zero yeah. zero knowledge opinions. <laughs> with respect, uh, we're not going to talk about the election. No, this is a safe zone. We, yeah, we're not going to try and force our beliefs on you. We, we in any way. We understand people might want us to, but we have we honestly we have friends on both sides of the issue, and I, I really don't care enough to talk about it. No, it's just there's so much going around. But anyway. Mike Burns R asks, Hey Dan, really enjoyed your one Fantastic Week episodes. I really appreciate when people are able to talk, joke about their mistakes. It makes everything feel way less scary. It makes me comfortable with sharing my own downfalls. Thank you. 
just a beautiful thing, you know. Thanks to Pete and Sam for having me on. I'm always down to talk with people about real stuff. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I like when people are transparent in general. Yeah. It always feels good. Totally. Um, and Waldinger. Oh, Tom. Tom Ruderman. Would you both consider coming to New Zealand? I'd love to eventually go to New Zealand to check yeah. everything out because it's so pretty, but... Oh, my God. That flight is so long. Yeah, we've kind of done that flight before. Yeah, we went to Bali sort of. a couple times, so it's, it's like... basically the same distance. So far. That's, that's the only thing. I would love to go, but man, is that a long trip. Yeah. I heard that, like, you land... Like, you do the long trip, you land, and then, like, you fly, like, 13 hours or something again. I, I can't remember. Why? But, because it's, uh, whatever airport you land in, I'm probably wrong. And I'm wondering, Waldinger, huh? I was going to say, I'm wondering if it's, like, Bali, where they have their own proprietary airline, so you have to take, you have to, let you like, you have to land in Jakarta, and then take Bali's airline <laughs> to Bali. Yeah. Maybe. And Waldinger asks, so to actually send the books to the printers, have you guys been learning a lot of InDesign for print or several several of the other Adobe programs? No. With, with what we have or what we did for the first book, that was all just Photoshop, just having everything, you know, cropped and having the, the cut lines and stuff. That was all done in Photoshop. I just made an action you know, button, like you can record actions in Photoshop and then assign it to a button on the keyboard. So you open up each file and you just press it and it changes, you know, the PSD it just runs through a process, pastes in the, you know, the cut and everything. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much it. Uh, I'll, yeah, for this one, I mean, that's what our dude Mark was saying last time he was like you should really use InDesign and the only reason is I haven't is because you gotta pay for it yeah <laughs> it's just just too lazy and the first book looks really good so so weird. I don't know I don't I don't think I mean maybe it'd be better but do the thing you know how to do yeah maybe I mean I'll try it but yeah we'll see Jacob Mobley asks, Dave, are you working up an IP for the dino characters? Also, I want that. <laughs> Feels like a better Star Fox Adventures or whatever it was called. With the oh, dinos. that's a good point. Yeah, Star Fox Adventures. No, I'm not. Um, I just think dinosaurs are going to come back in a big way. <laughs> yeah, I think they are too. Like I could, they it's, already it's are. One of those, it's one of those things I feel in the air. It's like going to be really big. They're already coming back in a big way. You've got Jurassic World. You've got the Power Rangers thing. It's it's coming. It's already back. I don't mean like those. I mean cool dinosaurs. I mean like Monster Hunter kind of dinosaur stuff. Oh no, stuff. that's that's the next thing. You bring you start with the real ones, just like in the '90s with Jurassic Park, yeah. and then all the cool stuff follows. Yeah, hey, I'm Renmar. trying to think of everything I do now as as if I were doing it for a toy line or. If I were doing it for a, a Saturday morning cartoon, which is basically the same. We're in my favorite part of this game, visually, if anyone's yeah, watching. Yeah, really cool. Um, the two things they combine to make this place are the novel Dracula and uh, Chronicles of Narnia. The frozen castle that the witch lives in with all the statues. It's, I don't know, this area looks so fucking cool. It's like the coolest thing I've seen in a game in a long time. <laughs> Brom Strokers. Yeah, Brom Strokers. Yeah, all the statues uh, in the courtyard. Genos asks, where did you find your commissions early on? Do you feel like they built your reputation at all, or were they just to survive? Some of them build up your reputation. Most of them are just to survive. You find a couple clients that are like really good to you, mm -hmm. and you stick to those because you can depend on them a little bit, and they have some trust. And, you know, you built a working relationship, and that's the most important thing is maintaining that. So you work for those people until you can hopefully get to a higher pay level working for another client or something after you've made up enough portfolio pieces while you're working on that, you know, whatever stuff you're doing for 
the lower end commission. But, uh, yeah, I mean, some of it builds reputation depending on what kind of work it is. If it's work that you can post and it's something that's popular and shareable, then, you know, you're proud of it too. Mm -hmm. It can, it can do a lot for you, but you know, that that's kind of all over the place. Most of the stuff I did for people, I, I didn't, I showed it, but in retrospect, I like, you know, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, like it wasn't great and it didn't really represent me at all. And it might've led me down paths that I didn't want to go down, which happened a lot Yeah. where my portfolio would reflect the wrong things. So it kind of goes all over the place. Some, some help, some keep you where you are and some are just like ones where you bite the bullet and you go, all right, let's just suffer through this one. Right. Let's just um, get but this where, where we yeah where we found most commissions was on conceptart.org mm -hmm. and that's pretty much gone for that now Rest in um peace. yeah there's a lot of other places i'm sure but who knows that i mean any any advice that we could give on that would be general advice no specific places since all those places that we used to post don't exist yeah Danny Moore 87 asks, what was the lowest paying job you guys ever accepted? Not one where you guys just didn't get paid, but one where someone offered you shit pay and you went, I agree to that. I just landed my first job and was so proud of myself. And when I told my friends about it and mentioned the pay, boy, did I get shit on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Your friend shit on your job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were most of the jobs that I got when I started out, I was getting like twenty dollars a painting. Yeah. For for like the very beginning, and I wasn't doing it to make money at that point. I was just doing it because it was helping me learn a lot. I mean, it helped me learn like how to price myself. Yeah. How much time these things take me. How to talk uh, to clients. Yeah. How to talk to clients. How to like work with them in general. You know, like how to deliver a deadline because I'd never done that. Um, how to be consistent with the style and like the quality. All that kind of stuff happened pretty quick. But yeah, I mean, lowest was probably 20 bucks a, a job. And if I had told anybody that, I'm sure I would have got shit on too. <laughs> but I don't think it's, I not, ever did. it's not why you're doing it. I don't think I ever did 20. I think the lowest I did was 35. Mm. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I was yeah. doing 35 to draw people's World of Warcraft characters. Yeah, I did that too. Tons I did of that. World of Warcraft Tons characters. Tons of that. Yeah, and that was, and that was a that, thing. That was before that amazing site existed where you could look at all the armor and stuff as 3D models. Yeah. Just had to like look at shitty screenshots and try to figure it out. Yeah, I did paintings of some dude and his wife's character for like three hundred dollars a painting, I think. Yeah, that was pretty early on. That one was funny. I was like, oh man, <laughs> what kind of job is this? Like, I can't wait to be a professional artist where a guy isn't telling me all the specifics of all his armor details, mm -hmm. and he's like super proud of it somehow. So I was contracted, or okay, contacted, Wait. not contracted. I was just going through them in order. Oh, sure, yeah, go ahead. A.V. Jacobs asks, Dave, next time you do a drawing or stream, I'd love to see the layer breakdown from the Dinosaur Girl and Space Kid posts on your Instagram today, if you still have them. Sure. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty simple. Um, that's actually just like the quickest stuff. I mean, I'm trying to just do really quick warm-up stuff in the morning. From now on, just something. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to put any stakes on it or, or say I'm going to do something and then not do it. I'm just, whatever. I'm just going to do something. It's, in, it's on the computer that's not comics because I've been doing comics for so long and not rendering anything mm -hmm. that I just want to keep that alive a little bit. So... Yeah, I'll, I'll share some of that. They only take me like 40 minutes, but that's if I'm not talking. Uh, da, 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 da. Ultimate shit. As Dave, do you use drawing tablets or Cintiqs? I use the, the drawing tablets, the Intuos 4. Intuos 4 large. 
Mm-hmm. Probably going to buy another one soon because mine is a cut in the middle of it that my pen nib keeps getting caught on. Yeah, I need a new one too. Six Foot Ewok asks, So I was contacted two to three months ago by a major game studio to do a commissioned piece. After a couple back and forth messages, they went off the grid. Do either of you have any insight into what might have happened since I think Dave, maybe Dan, worked with AAA Studios? There wasn't any weird negotiation issues or anything. They just went dark, and it just seemed strange. Depends if the last thing you talked about was money. Yeah, I mean, they might have just hired somebody else. Yeah, it's like if you had too many back and forths and somebody else was just like, I'll do it right now. (laughs) Yeah, they might have just hired someone else. They might have found someone to do it cheaper. The project might have got canceled. Like, you know, stuff like that happens all the time. The budget might have changed. But that's definitely happened to me. I mean, you have to also empathize with the person who is, like, reaching out to you. Right. A lot of times they're just so busy that, like, I can tell you, um, you know, just from my perspective, like, being at the point where I was just starting to get commissions from AAA Studios... Like, when I was just starting to get contracts on that stuff. Like, being in that position, each day, you feel the day. Yeah. And each thing matters because you're waiting on that. But to people who work in the AAA games space, days are like, boom, 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 boom. They're just gone. A mm-hmm. week vanishes in a second. And that's that also could be it. It's that they, you know, it's not like a huge priority for them. Yeah. You know, like they're, or maybe they just got super swamped. Like I would, something um, happened. And unless you've sent them a bunch of emails already, they haven't responded to. If you have sent them a bunch and they haven't responded, don't do this. But if they just never responded and you haven't spoken since, I would send a courtesy email that just says, hey, you know, never heard back. So I assume the job isn't going forward. Um, you know, thanks for the offer. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to work together in the future, that'd be great. You know, like just to be polite about it, keep on the radar. But if you've already sent a bunch of like, what's up? Is this moving forward? Hello? Then, you know, don't send another one. It's the last thing our directors uh, want. Six Foot Ewok says, they actually proposed the price and I gave the thumbs up and they were pushing for next steps. Not too many messages or anything. Well, I just wait. Yeah. If, If it goes another like, you know, week and a half, then it's definitely not happening. But I've agreed to stuff and then... Like, some of the movie projects that I agreed to work on, like, uh, I work with this this dude, and I was super hyped up, because he's, like, the director of the movie, and he was like, do you want to work on this thing with me? And I was like, who's working on it, because that's crazy. And he was like, just you and whoever you want to hire. And, like, he told me that, and it's, like, this amazing project. And, um... I got all excited, and then we just stopped talking <laughs> for like <laughs> for like three weeks or something like that, or four weeks. I don't remember. And um, I, I was like, okay, I guess that's not happening. And then he just comes back. He goes, so you ready? <laughs> like, let's just let's do it. Who are you gonna bring on all this stuff? I'm like, I thought you weren't doing anything. <laughs> like, I just assumed you said that, and then it vanished. So I had already, I had actually already like started working on other stuff, mm-hmm. and. Because I, I did want like some other income while we were working on Steve, so that's when that was, and uh, yeah, and it just took a long time to get everything off the ground, and that happens all the time. But now I just don't think about it as much because it happens so often that it's not, it doesn't like. I just figure it's either gone or it's not going to be for a while. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It could go either way. Bum, 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 bum. Pinshivik asks, do you guys feel much difference between Intuo sizes? I want a small, but everyone seems to be using medium large. Is it worth the difference? Yes. Yeah, I It mean, is worth it. I'd say go with the one that matches the size of your screen, usually, so it, it feels more one-to-one, but I don't know. I, I, I have a huge iMac, so I, I usually want to get the large. Yeah, I mean, because it's, like, your workstation, like, if that's what you do, if, like, you want to do it freelance, yeah, then, or you do it freelance, then, yeah, having a bigger monitor, and then you want, I want a tablet where I can use my arm. Exactly. 
like I don't want to just noodle with my wrist, you know what I mean? I don't want to draw from my wrist the whole time. That fucks you up. You being able to use your arm more, like when I do inks or something on my drafting table, I use my arm. I don't use my wrist so much. And I I hate that I can't do that the same way with my tablet. Like I wish that it was even bigger than this and I wish that they were more intuitive. I wish that like it was like using the stuff on my desk. Yeah. Where I can control everything, but you know. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Genos Grande asks, how do you come up with new ideas? Do you ever feel like you're just doing the same thing over and over after a while? That's only if you kind of like, if you let yourself do that. Yeah, I mean, you're choosing I mean, to do the same thing over yeah. and over again. That's, It's one of those answers that's a simple answer, but you don't think about it that way, so it's it seems more complicated than it is in your head. If you're no. doing the same thing yeah. every day, it's because every day you're deciding to do the same thing. You can stop doing that thing any, or you, any day. Or you put importance and value in doing that same thing. Yeah. And I get that because that's what I used to do. Sure. I mean, before we did Steve and found, like, some success there, like, we had a real response. And it wasn't the things that we, that we did all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, like, there's value in so many things. Yeah. We used to think you had to just do high-rendered whatever fantasy yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, nobody's going to take you seriously if yeah. whatever. But, I mean, just to make a comparison, uh, like, let me just say this. If we're talking that kind of thing to, to the real world and just to, like, your general enjoyment, because I think that I think it is fun to, like, be able to render things up and do a nice concept and, like, it's enjoyable when you see it and it's finished, then I get that. But just for a comparison's sake in terms of, like, what works for everyone in the world Mm -hmm. what what you're you know what you can work with so we did a comic the other night it's just the guy he's sitting at his drawing desk and he's like yeah I'll, i'll link the i'll link the comic in the chat in just a second so it's just this stupid comic it's it's nothing like crazy you know it's not supposed to be (laughs) <laughs> it's not supposed to be like no. amazing or anything like that but it's um, like the art equivalent of just letting out some gas because your ribs hurt <laughs> yeah just go oh okay that idea's out yeah it's just this dumb idea so did this the other night didn't take very long whatever did this did this little comic and um posted it on tumblr but posted it at the same time as the two concepts i did today which were of the space kid thing and the in the the dinosaur girl so most people i feel like in the immediate world that like we're from are like hey yeah the, the dinosaur girl and the kid but that's not what tumblr thinks yeah <laughs> you know like all these sites it's like you post the comic you'll get a huge response because it's relatable and it's something because the whole world isn't concept art people that want to see rendered designs yeah like somebody might look at the dinosaur girl thing and be like oh that's a dinosaur girl but they're not like they're not reading anything they're not relating anything they're not involved in anything yeah like there's nothing that they can hold on to there's nothing they can laugh at there's no response to be had other than oh this person might be able to draw (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah. but that's it and without some context it doesn't really exist so I used to think that you needed to render and that that's where ideas lived and my my new ideas you know like in quotes <laughs> new ideas was a new character that's all I thought of new ideas mm-hmm. a new idea is this oh what if it were like these two things combined in a character wouldn't that be cool but that's not that's limiting. That's super limiting. It's like all you're doing then is just ideas in a box. Like I'm just doing characters now. It's like, well, what if I see something stupid? Like what if I see something dumb when I'm walking down the street and it makes me laugh? Like I can put that in something. That's an idea. Yeah. Like I can put that down on paper and then, you know, 
from there it relate to people and that'll get a response so after doing steve it just felt freeing like oh ideas or whatever you want art can be anything <laughs> like as long as it's something that you actually not in like a dramatic way care about but just stuff that makes you laugh stuff that's interesting to you stuff that you know you think is cool like even if it doesn't really make sense in your immediate world it to do it like just do it and that's enough like that's i don't know i feel like you never run out of those really you just kind of have to open your eyes to it and be like oh there's tons of stuff i could talk about tons of stuff i could draw tons of things i could make like it's limitless like you just i don't know live in the world pay attention to things that are that are going on around you yeah you can just make things that relate and whatever i don't know no shortage of things you can do no it's hard to get to that place where it clicks that that's the truth but it, yeah it i don't know truth. i'm trying to think of like how i can put that into a concept art perspective yeah because I, I i i get it like that I would do what what you're saying, and I'd get so bored mm -hmm. doing character stuff because characters is is like a part of an illustration. It's like a part of a a scene, an idea. It, it like even poses that are too static. It's like, what is that? Is it just the clothes? Like, are you just showing me the clothes? Is this a model mm -hmm. wearing armor? Like, what's the point of it? Like, what were you doing? Like that. I started to question all that when I got bored and when I started working for Epic Games and they asked me to do concepts and I started doing like the simpler line style for their uh, sketches and things for the characters, I was like, oh, now I'm focusing on like what's this character's personality like, so I'll do the pose, the expression, like there'll be more to it and then the clothes is informed by that and that was one more thing to add to it and I was like, oh, now I have more ideas because I can work with like personality. And I started thinking about things differently there as opposed to just going like, what if I drew Viking lore? Sure. Ten mythical gods, you know what I mean? My like, version of Loki. Yeah, exactly. Like that gets old fast and easy. It's easy to get bored there. Yeah, you just kind of have to let yourself have fun. See where you can go. Yeah. Mograth, Mograg asks, would you recommend emailing artists at a studio you want to work at to find out how they got the job or to get the get a foot in the door? I mean, you can ask them stuff, yeah. talk to them. I'd recommend meeting them above anything if you can find out a way to go to a workshop or something, or if you, you know, if there's some kind of art meetup thing, and like if you're lucky enough to live somewhere near like San Francisco or LA, where a lot of those people are, um, making an actual personal connection is usually more effective, but. They might respond to your email. I mean, you can try. Yeah, I mean, it's all in the wording, of course. You yeah. gotta, like, go at it in a real humble way. Asking, like, you know, like, I've always wanted to work at this place. Like, yeah. I think your work is great. I was wondering, you know, I would love someday to be able to work there. Do you, would you have any advice from your experience being there? What I could do to best, like, increase my chance of getting hired if i applied <laughs> like yeah i mean just be super honest with them <laughs> and get ready for a lot of people to go oh you don't want to work here it fucking sucks and like burst <laughs> yeah. your bubble that happens all the time where you reach out to some studio you think is amazing and the artist you talk to is like oh no this place fucking sucks mm -hmm. you don't want to work here trust me here's all the stuff that happens Enema Wizard said something about how long our penises are, which is pretty cool. What do you say? I don't. I, I can't remember More what the. It must have been in the context of our conversation. Oh, I don't know what that is, but okay. Flatulent Mind asks, when you're whipping up some cream, do you use your wrist or your arm? I mean, it depends on the time. Yeah, I mean. If you're trying to be low key about it, wrist. If I'm going for strength of stroke, the arm. If I'm going for speed, the wrist. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Obviously. If you want a heavy pump, you gotta get your arm into it. You just wanna have like a quick series, you know, real quick, yeah, get that risk going. Yeah, and you gotta tap the eggs like a base. Yeah, exactly. Um Adrian Bauer asks, on the topic of characters in a box and short comics, something I started to realize as I slowed down on comics and drawing is that my own creations would do better if I made them short comics to characterize the, and hook viewers. Mm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I think, it, I think it helps a lot to do that. I mean, just to give... I mean, again, just to give context to something. Just to better spell out why you're doing something. Like, one of... One of those things for me was doing the, the Skull and Shark trailer. It was like, just saying, like I, I always thought in my head, I was like, if I could just find a way to get across everything I think this should be, then it would come across better. Yeah, people, like, people would understand. People would, yeah, they'd, they'd get the tone. They'd get what this is. And doing the video, I was like, yeah, that's satisfying. And comics is another version of that. It's like any time you can put your thing in an environment that further describes that, you know, what it is. Because nothing's more frustrating than pitching something and putting it out there, thinking it's one thing, and then having people respond to it and have them right. interpret it as something completely different. Oh, you think this is just so badass. No, like the classic that I always go back to is we know what Skull and Shark is obviously because we're making it but when kung fury came out right. hundreds of people hundred like every single this this was maybe yeah, the you're, most, gonna, you're gonna love this this was maybe the most disheartening thing that's ever happened to me in the art community is every single friend i had literally all of them except dave was like oh someone beat you to it with skull and shark check out kung fury and i'm like oh you think that's what this oh Oh, that's what you think I'm trying to be. Well, that's that's disappointing. Like that, I don't know. That was that was sad. Yeah, that, that nothing, nothing, us up. nothing feels weirder than like, putting something like out the there and having everyone furthest, think it's something else. It's the furthest thing. <laughs> yeah, from what we want to do. Oh, yeah. Um, by the way, Adrian, you beautiful piece of shit. Yeah, dude. Just want to say congratulations if you guys don't know our very own team cream adrian bauer adrian in bauer. the chat right there you see him you see him right there there he is he is one of the people worked on owl boy 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10 <laughs> and look at what it's doing Look at those ratings. It's a bit of Metacritic. It's right there. They're saying it's the greatest thing since Shovel Knight. I heard that yesterday yeah. on a podcast I listen to regularly. They fucking loved it. They were creaming about it for 30 minutes. Easy yeah, Allies what the podcast. the hell? The hell, Adrian? They fucking loved it. Adrian, what are you doing? How do you think you can just make something like that and casually come in here? Yeah. Get out. Beautiful fucking game. <laughs> yeah. You beautiful person. I'm finally going to make a PC so I can play some games that I couldn't play otherwise. Yeah. So I'll play it soon, I promise, Adrian. I'd be playing that right now if I could. It looks so beautiful. I know. That... The I, art... Ugh. Like, this is... Like, I don't care that you're here, Adrian. Fuck you. Yeah. No, I love you, but, um... Game looks <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> I'm not trying to jerk you off. I'm just saying that that game has some of the best pixel art since, like, Sienkin Densetsu 3. Let me just say, let me just say this, because you deserve it, Adrian. Your whole team deserves it. You are the only indie developers I've ever seen that have gone for the height of Super Nintendo aesthetic instead of the 8-bit Nintendo aesthetic, because it's so much more work. Yeah. It's so much more work to make a game that looks like Sienkin Densetsu 3 or Bahamut Lagoon or any of those fucking games that Square put out in 1996 than it is to make something that looks like DuckTales on the NES. And you went for it, and you fucking did it. Some of the only people in the world that have taken that on, and it looks fucking beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We love you. Uh, ma -ma 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 -ma. Jacob Mobley's a fan of Jim Singleman's coffee, 
coffee talk. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Jim Singleman. There's like a thousand issues of that written. <laughs> that we haven't even made. <laughs> no. That's going to be our Garfield book where there's 300 issues in a, in a whatever. I really think like whenever we're done with Steve... Yeah. The next, the next two months following Steve should, since like, just it'd be so, gym. since it'd be so easy to just do every single gym issues. It's such a simple black and white style. Yeah, just get every single one of them done in two months, and then just have that book be its own thing and give be, it to a publisher, it so we weird. don't have to do it. <laughs> oh man, I'm that gonna would be start, beautiful. I'm gonna start work on a side project we're doing that we haven't talked about. I think. uh Either right before or right after Christmas. Mm. I can't wait. I'm so pumped. Yeah, eventually we'll be able to hopefully hire somebody. Little thing we're little little thing we're putting out. Stuff. Little thing we're putting out. We haven't told anyone about. That's just gonna show up one day and go away. Just yeah. Gonna come out and go away, and it's gonna be a huge thing, and we're never gonna talk about it till it's nope. out. Nope. Can't wait to start. Oh. oh man thank you everybody for giving us the ability to do that <laughs> cause Jesus Seriously. Jesus is that better than just being like how many orcs do you need this month oh I'll get on it <laughs> AV Jacobs asks either of you guys ever been in a fist fight if not just give me a wicked tough story <laughs> I've been in a fist fight yeah yeah I used to fight all the time when I was a kid. That was like, I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's just a small town. Well, when I was a kid, my, I mean, I, I was obsessed with Van Damme. I wanted to be Van Damme. And, but I wanted to be a good guy. <laughs> good guy, <laughs> so, Van Damme. So like, he was always the good guy. So I used the excuse that I would beat up bullies in my school. And that's what I did like every day. Like, I just fight bullies. And, I mean, it's not like I was a good guy. I was just so happy. <laughs> you, were Charles, you were Charles Bronson using questionable methods. Yeah, I just wanted to, be, I wanted to be in a movie. And I loved fighting. My brother used to make me fight kids in the neighborhood. He would, like, just... We'd have a circle in a yard, and he'd invite kids over because I had the like the worst temper ever when I was little. Dan heard some of the stories, but you knew all of them anyway. Yeah, I knew at all the, of them. At the wedding, it was like the funniest this thing. This was the my... speech Dave's brother gave, his <laughs> best man. It was about how he'd make Dave fight bullies in the backyard and how Dave would kill animals as a kid because he was curious. It made him sound like a serial killer. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. But, um... Wait, before I get into it. Orphic Whip, just subscribe with Twitch Prime. We love Orphic you. Whip Cream. Yeah, we love whip, it. Whip Cream, yeah. Yes. But, yeah, I got in a lot of fights, and um, Dan was in fights, too. Yeah. I got. And, it was mostly me getting beat up. I mean, I won maybe between the ages of one and... 18 i won maybe two fights and i was in maybe like 50 yeah i stopped i stopped getting in fights after like sixth grade because it was i don't know like that's when it becomes real i remember when i was in sixth grade or seventh or something i can't remember but i re i was walking through the hall and i remember my friend's older brother who was a junior in high school he was on the ground, and this other dude who was a bully was sitting on top of him with his thumbs almost completely in his eye sockets, like buried in his eye sockets. Mm -hmm. And everybody was trying to pull him off. And it's like moments like that you go, oh, fighting should probably stop yeah. <laughs> when you're in high school. I had a because teacher. somebody's going to push your eyeballs into your skull. I had a teacher that bullied me, and Dave fought him. Oh uh, right, yeah. A teacher, uh, a teacher punched me once for making fun of him. Punched me right in the collarbone, super hard. And the first thing Dave did in like two seconds flat, not even kidding, almost like an instinct, 
He grabbed a T-square off the counter, dropped to his knees, and whipped it up and hit the guy in the nuts with the T-square as hard as he could and then hit him in the stomach. <laughs> right the second, the second he punched me in the collarbone, Dave grabbed the T-square, hit him in the nuts. When he doubled over, he hit him in the stomach. And then we were a kick. <laughs> and then I said, you just punched a student. He said, uh, he's, I think he said, I'm going to fucking kill you guys. And I said, you just punched a student. You're not doing anything to anybody. I said, your, your career is over if you say anything to anyone. Yeah. That was pretty funny. He was the worst. <sighs> yeah, he really was the worst. But everybody in that. our town fought. I'm going to fucking I mean, get you expelled. You just punched a student. Do you have any idea what's going to happen to you if you do anything, dude? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no. That dude fucking blew. You are he, like, done. He tried so hard to be cool. He, he like, let all the younger kids smoke and yeah. shit. That nah, was so he was stupid. He fucking lamest, dude. Uh, yeah. Those are, those are the, the good, good old days. Forever immortalized in the second to last issue of our comic when a big fat bird has spiked up hair in a puka shell necklace. Yeah. That's what we're making fun of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I haven't been in like a fight fight since I lived in that terrible apartment in Boston. Yeah, I haven't been in a fight in a long time. Yeah, I think that was the last fight I was in. Yeah. I I think the last fight I was in was a joke fight that just turned into a fight. No, the one I was in was not a joke fight. That was the one where I drove to Carver afterwards and I called you and I was like, well, I threw a kid down a staircase, his leg might be broken. There's a hole in my <laughs> wall because I missed his head and punched a hole through the wall. I don't know if I'm going to jail. <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, good, good times. That was an amazing one. That was not good. That was maybe the only time in my entire life I just saw red and just was not thinking. Yeah, I stopped seeing red. I mean, nobody really did anything to me, though. Like, after after a certain age, it stopped. But that the one Dan's talking about right now, a guy, like, what, didn't he give your name to the police? So he was a homeless dude who one of my roommates let move into our apartment, which already right off the bat... I'm not cool with. Oh. Oh. Is anyone seeing what just happened? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you just fell through the floor. Oh, no, dude. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. Wicked Tough was a different animal entirely. Wicked Tough fought to taste blood. Hey, there was a floor at least. Wow, that was a good time. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, there was a homeless kid in Boston who was like a, you know, a real super piece of shit. Crust, crusty punk, if that's the term you want to use. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was a uh, he was a drug dealer. And uh, one of my roommates let him move in, and he he sold shrooms and acid and hallucin other hallucinogen stuff to people, not like crack or meth or anything, just like you know acid, shrooms, weed. They let him move in, and I was like, I don't want him here because my name was the name on the lease at that apartment. It was me and uh, my friend John's name, and I was like, Yeah, I don't want him here. I just I don't want this kid here. Like, make get him out of here. And uh, you know they let him stay and. He started inviting people over, and pretty soon there were like four or five people in our apartment at any given time that I didn't know, because he was just this homeless kid who was selling drugs to people, was inviting them over to sell them drugs, and people were, people I'd never met were just getting high in my apartment. They were the worst. And they I was were like, the worst. Yeah, I'd come <laughs> home from class, and I'd be like, who are these people? They'd just be like seven people, like, you know, coked out in the living room look like on shrooms i like what the fuck like you cannot do this and you know everyone else who lived there that was paying rent which was four other people they basically outvoted me they were like no he's gonna stay here he doesn't have anywhere else to go 
eventually he let his girlfriend move in so then there were two homeless people that were now sleeping there plus all the other people they were bringing they started having parties um they were eating all the food that i would buy and stuff and the fruit like it was just fucking horrible so anyways they have a party one night and uh i wasn't there and the police came and this wasn't the first time the police had come to the apartment so this was like third warning kind of thing where they were like okay we're you're officially like something's gonna have to happen because your neighbors are not happy and uh they asked to see who the person was on the lease because this time the cops had gone to the landlord and actually like you know okay we need to talk to to uh to dan warren we need to talk to dan warren we need to talk to john and uh the drug dealer kid because he was you know obviously had the most to lose because he was selling drugs he's the one that went downstairs and answered the door when he found out the cops were there because he didn't want anyone else to fuck it up he was like you know he did the thing where he acts sober i guess and everyone's seen someone do that where they go oh yeah hello hello officers oh yeah no yeah yeah we'll, we'll quiet down like he went down there to do that and they were like we have to speak to either dan warren or john and he was like oh i'm dan warren and they were like can we see your id and he was like oh no i don't have it on me he was like but i'm dan warren i've lived here for this long and they were like okay well dan warren here's a citation for uh you know breaking the noise ordinance thing and this is you know we warned you last time that this shouldn't happen again tell all your friends to leave so i got a citation in my name at the place i lived at and my landlord found out about it and he told the cops he was me and i came home and when i found out that he had told the cops he was me and that there was a citation in my name because he had spoken to the cops assuming my identity i just lost it i just completely lost it i the first thing i did was i went in the room I grabbed his backpack with all of his drugs and stuff in it. I threw it over the rail. We lived in a third floor apartment. I threw it over the rail into the street. He came at me screaming about how much money was in the bag. I hit him in the face. I tried to hit him in the face again. He dodged. I hit the wall, punched a hole through the drywall. <laughs> I just started hitting him in the stomach over and over again. He started backing up down this long hallway we lived in. I grabbed him by the throat. I opened the front door. I threw him down the stairs. <laughs> I went back in the room, his girlfriend was there, <laughs> grabbed all her stuff, threw it over the rail, threatened to hit her, <laughs> she left, then I got in my car, called Dave, drove home, one hour to south, southern Massachusetts, said yeah, I, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> I guess, I guess I might go to jail, and the first thing Dave said was, well he lied about who he was to the police, so he's not going to go to the cops, he's a drug dealer, you could have done anything to him, I think you actually said you could have killed him and nothing would have happened. <laughs> That was Dave's advice, was you, you could have done way worse to that kid. You could have actually broken his legs, and he wouldn't have been able to go to the cops because he was selling drugs out of your apartment. So, one of my eternal regrets is that I didn't do much worse. But hey, you do what you can. You do what you can. That was the last fight I ever got in. I was uh, 20. It was 10 years ago. Wow, 10 years ago. Yeah. I remember that night. Oh, I lost it. When they were like, I was like, what's this? Like in my room, they were like, oh, it's a citation. Why is there a citation in my name here? Oh, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, whatever. I think his name was Sean, I can't remember. I can't remember his last name though. But, uh... <laughs> I like, like that co comment in the chat. If you broke his legs, he wouldn't have gone to the police because his legs would be broken. <laughs> true yeah i i can't even describe how mad it was the most irrational anger i've ever felt in my entire life when they were like oh he told the cops he was you i was just like well av av jacobs he says i can't even imagine dan mad i can they've seen, seen it, it so yeah. many times well mad enough to hit somebody you've only seen maybe like <laughs> twice my favorite was oh i don't hate you i don't hate you like that i don't just hate you i hate i <laughs> <laughs> it was I don't hate you like ha 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 I hate you I hate you like <laughs> I hate you like ha 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 die Dr. Jones ha 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 die shooting over and over again at the oh, girl's face yeah with the yeah, <laughs> making my hand into a gun and doing the Indiana Jones thing it's a girl's face yeah it's like <laughs> I was I was in tears I was crying so much when that happened yeah. just in the middle of the street that was bad yeah I was angry back then <sighs> That's because you live with homeless people. I lived with a bunch of homeless people that did drugs all the time. It was fucking miserable. Well, 
special guest appearance by my wife. Whoa. Kimmy. She has a question for the chat. Ready? One last, I just want to see if I'm an idiot, because I don't get this shit. I'm studying for a test. So, Kim, Kim here's... needs our help. Okay, this is just one of the sections, and it's grammar. And maybe I am an idiot, but I also have an Asian mom who's foreign, so, you know. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm blaming. Okay, so the question is, or I guess the problem is, select the best word for the blank in the following sentence. I will blank the chart to the patient's room later today. Can you type that up there? I will blank the chart to the patient's room later today. Okay. I will. Okay, and I'll give you the options. Blank the chart to the patient. Patient apostrophe S is. Yeah. Okay. Room. Later today. Period. Okay, now here are the options. A. Bring. B. Take. C. Brought. D. Took. Bring. Does everyone else agree with that? I say bring. It's either bring or take, but bring, it's... given the context, I think brings more accurate. I will brought the chart. Obviously, I know it's not brought or took. It's bring or take. And I think bring is more accurate. Yeah, I think, okay, I think so it's bring. Okay, so this is my nursing um, entrance exam. I circled bring. You want to know what the fucking answer key said? Take. Really? Yeah, like why the fuck is that different, right? I thought take would be current, like I'm taking it right now. I'll, I'll take okay. it to them right now. And bring is like, oh yeah, I'll bring it to them later. It sounds so more the, natural. The... Let me, so let me the read book, the... So the book says take yeah. is the right answer. So let me read why. This is like just the dumbest thing ever, and it's just really frustrating because my test is tomorrow, and I'm like, everyone, thank you for making me feel not like an idiot. <laughs> well, everybody said bring. I want to hear why. Take, because bring assumes you're already there. Um, it says take actually, is it's, bring is better. Actually, uh, it's the opposite. I mean, that's... Kind of take is right, but it's in the sentence the action is away from the speaker who will carry the patient's chart from a near place where the speaker is to a far place, the patient's room. Therefore, the best word is take. Okay. Because the chart is near them. I mean, yeah, that's really where they are. That's really so some like near that's me somewhere else. Does, oh, does, so does take imply that you don't have it yet? No, it means that it's near you because if you're bringing something, you're getting something from far away. And then bringing it. I never knew that was the context of bring. I didn't either. Isn't that insane? This is part Plus, of my test. their room doesn't sound like it's far away in the context. There are nurses who don't even speak English in this country. <laughs> yeah, why, why is that worthy? I don't know why. Worthy... This is part of my entrance exam. I'm so stressed out right now. Why is that worthy of docking you a point? That's like the most semantic grammar school thing I've ever heard. Like, they yeah. both mean the same thing. You could say whatever you want. I'm going to croak this over to their room. Mm -hmm. You can do anything. I'm gonna shimmy this over there. I'm gonna shimmy it over, yeah. <laughs> Let me shimmy this on over to their room. I'm gonna squip over there. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm getting frustrated. I think I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna Hail Mary. That's, um... That's a really dumb question, I guess, it for... for... Like that. Okay, it sounds but... like it shouldn't be a concrete Hold... right answer. Hold no. on, let me... Let me give you another one that, like, the explanations are what really get me. I, for whatever reason, guess this one right, but... Which word in the following sentence should be replaced? The sentence is, the department chairman stepped up to the podium. So which one of those words should be replaced? The department chairman stepped up to the podium. Mm -hmm. Okay. The department the chairman podium? stepped up to the podium? Yep. I guess stepped is the operative word, right? No, which one should just be replaced? Like, which one is, like, doesn't belong in the sentence? Podium, stepped, chairman, or up? Oh, those are the choices? Podium, stepped, chairman, or up? Mm-hmm. Uh... I mean, chairman has to be there because it's the subject of the sentence, right? It can't be the department stepped up to the podium. It's being replaced, not being removed. 
What are the so other options? You don't have the word that replaces it. No, just, just if there's a better word for any of those words. Um, oh, if there's a better word or just removed <laughs> completely? No, not removed, replaced. Say it one more time. Jesus. The department chairman stepped up to the podium. Up. You can get rid of up. He can step to the podium without stepping up. But you're not getting rid of it. You're replacing it. With what? Anything that is a better descriptive word or better anything. Just a better word. Something oh that fits better God. for the sections. And what are, those, what are the options? Podium, stepped, chairman, or up. Uh, what does that say? Chairman. Yeah. I guess yeah. chairman. Yeah. I mean, you can get rid of up and it works better as a sentence. That's really weird. Okay, you want to know why? Okay, so I chose chairman too, and that's the right answer. Okay, you want to know why? Why? Because it's a man. Yeah. The word chairman is considered sexist language. Yeah. Sexist oh, language can be avoided. That's what I okay. After. I was like, yeah, right, right. That I was going to say, isn't it usually the department chair? I haven't heard the word chairman in a long time. Yeah, that's that's what I was like but thinking about it. Like, what? It's so vague. Like, how is that something to get into right. nursing school? Yeah, that's like. Yeah, I haven't heard the term chairman in a really long time. It's usually chair. It's okay. Lenny and I are going to open up a wedding planning business, so I can throw all this Jeez. out the fucking window. <laughs> so the, the the test actually says this is sexist language? That's literally what. So I'm, I have a book that's designed just for this test, and it explains the answer saying that it's sexist language can be avoided by changing chairman to chair or chairperson. Yeah, I don't even hear chairperson as much as I hear just chair. But okay, I mean, yeah. You couldn't even do chair human. That was the, it. That was exactly. <laughs> that was a confusing question. I thought you were saying which word to get rid of completely, which would be up, which I'm guessing is why they put up there as an option, is because the, the syntax of the question would trick people. You know what they should have said? They should replace chairman with chair chairman with like a Y. Isn't that how you're supposed to do it now? Oh my god. <laughs> right. Yeah. Isn't that... Chairman. <laughs> chairman. Chairman. Chair cyst. Chairman. Yeah, chair cyst. <laughs> yeah, chair cyst. I'm cyst gendered. Chair cyst white male. It's not a cyst. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a cyst. I'm cyst. I'm, I'm cyst gendered. <laughs> I'm triggered. Oh, boy. oh, I just yeah. lost a bunch of echoes. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, how are you, Dan? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you feeling better? Yeah. Yeah. Food poisoning's over. Thank God. Are you, uh, are you shaken up at all? Oh, God. Please don't. Not here, not now. Okay. How's Elu doing after the, uh... Would she, she go to the vet? <laughs> you take her to the vet? I can't remember. No, she got groomed. Oh, okay. I like those photos you put up of her and, uh, Wiko. That photo is actually a really old photo of, uh, Wiko. And I was like, oh my god, that looks just like that picture. You should tell them about the... The mm -hmm. person... We were talking about fights when we were younger. Mm. And but you should tell them the story <laughs> of those two girls. What? Oh, oh no! I've never been in a fight. No. Maybe okay. I fight. I fought my brother a lot. Yeah, it doesn't count. Good, good reason though. Yeah, we we fought a lot. Like, not just like arguing. Like we physically fought. But he's also four years older than me, so. That's weird. I got really tough. Let me just tell you. I feel like if I but, had a sister four years younger than me, I wouldn't physically fight her. Just, just, um, just tell the, but I lived, the best parts of that fight. I lived in, like, kind of ghetto area, and there was fights all the time. Um, but one of the best fights was these two girls that I've known since, I think, middle school. They got in a fight, and one of them was wearing a skirt, and got punched in the stomach, and pooped on the other girl's shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the one girl who got like Fantastic. her shoe got pooped on. She was like running around the parking lot with her shoes off, and she was like, "She pooped on my shoe." She <sighs> <laughs> but then, so, um, so then one of my best friends um, went to another high school, and I told her about it immediately, of course, because we both knew this girl who pooped since like we knew her since elementary school, 
And so I was like, you'll never believe what this girl did. She pooped. She got punched in the stomach. She pooped. And then <sighs> so she told everyone at her school before this other girl was, like, even able to change schools to her school. So even before she got there, <laughs> like, everyone already knew that she had pooped on some other girl's shoe. Oh, can you imagine? So she shows up and they're like, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you dummy. Pooping on shoes. We all know about it. Pooping on <laughs> shoes. Go find another school. <laughs> yeah. Go. F yeah, exactly. You're done here. You're done here forever. Don't even try. Uh, uh, that was funny. Uh, that's great. That was really fun. There was actually one fight in middle school where... There, for whatever reason, like, there were some girls who were going through puberty pretty early and refused to wear bras. It was really gross. But she, like, this one girl, like... Super gross. <laughs> it was just gross because it just looked gross. I don't like the shape. I like to this day. I don't like. Never mind. Anyway. Go ahead. So, you, finish the <laughs> you don't like the shape of little girls' boobs. Finish the sentence. <laughs> no, like it was. They weren't little girls. Like they were developed. They were just boobs, and it just like. They were big girl, thirteen-year-old boobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who likes the shape of boobs? Anyway. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> no, just like. Okay, we also had to wear uniforms, so it just looked really gross underneath, like... It just looked gross. They looked saggy. On. Anyway. <laughs> Ab abort. <laughs> Change of direction. So, so that girl got in a fight with somebody else, and the other girl who was fighting the no-bra girl was like, like, I don't want her boobs to rub up against me, so she took her shoe and started throwing, like, things at her and used her shoe to, like, beat up this other girl because she didn't want to touch her. <laughs> <sighs> Great. Yes. Well, because, like, they were, like, really big boobs and she didn't want him to in her face or to, like, accidentally <laughs> punch her boobs the or something. <laughs> she what? She used her shoe to beat her up. <laughs> I don't understand the logic. I don't either. I don't know. I'm not I don't want to touch her boobs, so I beat her with a shoe. I have to hit her with my shoe because her boobs are so big. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, why don't you just start kicking her? I, I always know. go for my shoe I when I see a big person in the fight. Anytime I see a girl with big boobs, I go for my shoe. <laughs> I'm like, whoops. I'm going to need at least an extra 10 inches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was two girls in like sixth grade. Yeah. One of them didn't have boobs, and one of them had big boobs. Wow. Imagine that. I don't want your boobs rubbing up against me. Just beat the shit out of her. <laughs> Ew. Take your shoe off. Beat the shit out of her. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the punch in the stomach, poop on the shoe. I don't know. That's the pinnacle. It's the top of the mountain. Pump, My favorite. Punch in the stomach, like... poop on the shoe is what a goblin says. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rump that's a rumple stiltskin riddle that he says in your bedroom when you punch in the stomach poop on the shoe <laughs> a punch on the stomach a poop on the shoe it's old uh, that's an irish thing <laughs> <laughs> that's what the puck says to you in the forest yeah, uh. yeah there were lots of fights though I, like it's all it's always so funny because there was like a Kmart down the street from our our school so like Pretty if funny. if they if people didn't um like want to get caught or like if, they get locked up in Kmart if the teachers knew that they were about to fight they would be like oh, let's meet at Kmart like it's so tough you know <laughs> or like let's meet at Taco Bell see you at Taco Bell so stupid let's meet at Kmart then everyone Shh. can walk over there shoe section if I <laughs> if I saw a girl get punched in the stomach poop on a shoe in front of a Kmart <laughs> I just quit I would yeah, yeah I'd give up I wouldn't know Retire. what to do put all my chips I go well that's the end of that <sighs> oh yeah that was tough that was tough to hear well oh. I don't know we've been on here for a while yeah we should probably I'm hot should probably bail <laughs> I'm really hot. <laughs> yeah. I had to open my window. Sorry if everyone's heard the cars going by. It's too warm in here. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's take one more question and then go. All right. Jacob Mobley asks, Dave and Dan, do you guys make the one-off comics right away once you think about them, or do you let them sit before you make it? Uh, usually right away. What we do is we talk about, we, we say the lines back and forth and try to find 
the right way to say it, like the right like word economy, so it's not too long, not too short. Like, are there any words that'd be better? And then yeah, we just do it right away. Yeah, it's, the, it's just like, I mean, it's not like the comic gets done right away, but the scripts get done right away. Yeah, pretty much. Like we just have an idea, get it all down, and then just save the script. And we write descriptions for the panels, like on that yeah. one we just did, like. The second panel with all the stuff the guy's drawing, we figured yeah, we out. just joked around about that back and forth. What could it be? Yeah, we wrote all that down and then figured out what the last panel was going to be, and yeah. But they're talking about one-off comics, though, like not just Steve, right? Yeah, that's what yeah, we were just talking one, about. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, I mean, a lot uh, of the one-off comics come from like just things that have happened to you guys too. So you guys. Well, take... I mean, like the one-off one, like the guy with the glasses, with the drawing on the table. That one. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's just like a random that's, idea. That's real life. That actually <laughs> happened. It's real life. Well, I mean, that that was a statement I said to Dan before, like that first sentence, why well, move to another country when you can draw your own and live there in your imagination? <laughs> was and just I said, something I, I said to Dan. And I said, <laughs> the second he said it, I said, that would be an amazing Imgur comic. And then we started saying, what would the second panel be? And we were like, well, it has to be the thing he's drawing. And then we talked about that for a while. And yeah, then it's got to be him in there. Yeah. Get and then it's got to be the real world outside. Like, that's how pretty much everything goes. It's just talking. Yeah, he's a maniac in his mind. Yeah. And the place he lives is really great. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think you guys do a really good job, too. Like, whenever I come back with something i'm complaining about from work or school oh i love those to stories. make it funny because you guys do a really good job of making something that could be potentially really scary or creepy into something really funny oh i love the stories you tell us about stuff that happens at work they're like my favorite thing ever yeah a lot of that makes it into stuff i did have somebody who works the same place at me as me tell an older guy with white hair that he looks like he's from space today <laughs> <laughs> you gotta tell that story yeah. Let's hear it. Uh well he's a handicapped dude. From space. <laughs> he's, not, he's not handicapped. Mentally he handicapped. Okay, I guess mentally handicapped. Well, not even really. He's just kind of developmentally delayed. Like not like handicap handy handicap because he obviously works and he can function on his own and stuff. He's just kind of like Asperger ish, um, but a little bit delayed as well. And so, um, he was asking another person who's like, I mean, all white hair, really old guy. If he was into sci-fi yeah, and fantasy. Like, <laughs> well, no, he said, he said, are you excited to see the new Star Wars? Rogue One? He just mumbled over Rogue One. That Rogue was one. an impression. That was just like, Rogue One? Because you couldn't understand him. And so the uh, older guy is like, I, what? What is that? He's like, you don't read science fiction? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm really not a fan of anything. And I thought that was a hilarious answer because he's just like this older guy. I'm just... really not a fan of anything. Yeah. <laughs> what an amazing statement. Yeah. And then... um. In fact, I wish I was dead. And then he... <laughs> I'm well, really then he just... not a fan of anything. The kid asking the question just goes, oh, that's weird. You look like you're from space <laughs> because of your white hair. Like, I don't even know where this is going, but... Oh boy. Yeah, he's like you look like you look like you're from space. You look like you're from space. It's just thing. a little bit awkward, you know, and I don't know. I think it was supposed to be a compliment because in his head, you know, that's really cool, but I would it's just really, really awkward. I would really like that sentence though, in the context of like a British guy and and like a old um, Oh absolutely thing. <laughs> the little kid going like are you going to see the new Star Wars? And some of them go like, well, Johnny, I'm really not a fan of anything. I'm not a fan of anything, really. In fact, I don't even know how much longer I'm going to live. Yeah. I'm not a fan of anything, really. <laughs> Fucking great. Oh, what a great, great sentiment. I know. Isn't that a, it's amazing? It really is amazing. <laughs> That's like what I say before I throw myself out of a window. <laughs> I can see myself saying that and then just falling backwards out of a skyscraper. I'm not really a fan of anything, really. <laughs> Bye. Oh, boy. 
Well, I oh, guess uh, we're done here. The the chat's gone triggered. Oh, is it triggered? <laughs> hey, chat. I don't know who started talking about politics. Stop it. Just stop. <laughs> Nobody fucking cares. Except for everybody on Facebook. Except for the whole world. This is a this is a safe space. This is a carefree zone. This is a carefree zone. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why we can't just talk about the space guy and my grammar questions. Yeah, th that, that's, that's a way. To worry about. That's a way better thing to talk about. Can you believe Thanksgiving is coming up? I was just thinking about that, and I'm like, I've been so caught up in all this nursing stuff that I've had to do. It's like that two I'm like, weeks. Yeah, I'm like lost in the time. I'm like, oh my god. Nothing planned. So, Although you, I did make two quiches. Does your whole family get together? Is it like a huge Thanksgiving, or do you just see your parents? No, it's a huge. It's always humongous. Humongous. It's always huge. Always, yeah. Man. I mean, like, look how they did our wedding. You know. I kind of want to come out there for the New Year thing. Are you talking about Vietnamese New Year? Yeah. Whatever. Oh, so what, what, we can uh, gamble. Yeah, that, the, whatever the thing you were telling me about was with the gambling. I kind of. Okay, wanna... you have to bring money though. You have to bring money as gifts. Dude, of course I will. I'll observe all the cultural whatever. You have to bring them in red envelopes, and you have to present them to everyone as good luck. That's fucking awesome. Thing. I want to go Here's, to that. I'm just going to say this on here because I haven't done it yet, and then we should get off of here. Sure. I didn't know the Vietnamese people were very superstitious to the point where they believe in dark magic. <laughs> Not what it was. And ghosts. <laughs> ghosts for sure. Not dark magic. Black. The blackest of magic. No. Um, and it was Vietnamese New Year. And we're sitting downstairs. And we're, we're gambling. And uh, what's the game called? I forget. The board. I don't remember. Somebody told me. Oh. Um, if any of you speak Vietnamese, do not judge my Vietnamese. Wow. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's called Bokwa. Which just means like gourd or like bottle crab. Fuakra? So what you do. Bokwa. So what I did was I bet you put money down on like the six different one, right? Yeah, so there's the six different spaces, there's they're like, different animals. Yeah. And you, you bet money and you basically like roll Three dice. dice. And they all have pictures. Six six pictures on them so if you get like if all three dice show like a crab then and you, you put get money on a crab like a dollar you get three dollars back it yeah. like basically multi it's like a multiplier so if you put down like a ton of money you get a ton of money back mm -hmm. whoa based on the dice dave was throwing our money away no our luck money <laughs> the first time we played i made a ton of money and then it slowly went away. Are you but, only allowed to spend the money that people give you in the envelopes, or can you bring your yes. own money? No, you can bring I mean, your own money. But, but that's if, the fun part. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds funner if you have a cap. Yeah, but we're playing against family, too. And usually it's my grandma who's the person who's rolling the dice, so she's the person and paying. And I her. am going to take everything from her. <laughs> and so what I did was every time I'd look around and I'd go, crab and chicken. And I just put all my money on crab and chicken. But you understand, because we're playing against family, we only do like quarters. And it's for the little kids, too, so we put like quarters down, or like maybe a dollar or two what? dollars. And Dave was putting like five and ten dollars down. Everybody, everybody puts down dollars, nobody puts down quarters. Well, that's what, like, later on. Like for the little kids, though, you know? Yeah, but we quarters. weren't, I'm not talking about that. We didn't even play that then. Oh. So I was saying crab and chicken over and over and over, and I kept betting on it, and I kept winning, and I won like so many times in a row and one one time I put twenty dollars on chicken <laughs> I lit a ride and I won a shitload of money that's great and then and then from that <laughs> Kim's aunt was just <laughs> looking at me <laughs> from across the board <laughs> with like a mythical wonder like what kind of magic is this which I aunt mad that you no winning. no she looked at me like concerned that there were darker things which, happening which aunt devil in you no a hundred percent she was looking at me as if some kind of magic was at work please in the room. tell me this was jackie no, no. <sighs> some crab and chicken magic crab. was going on that chicken. night well yeah. everybody you've heard it here crab and chicken magic dave's got a demon in him 
<laughs> I guess we're gonna go. Uh, I saw a question in the chat about buying more stuff from the Kickstarter. You can still get everything on uh, stevelichman.com. It goes to a PayPal store where you can buy all the stuff, so... Yeah, if you'd like some more stuff, you can grab it there. But, uh... We've been on here for a while, so I think we're gonna get off. But thanks for coming, everyone. And, uh, we'll be streaming again over the weekend. I hope you guys buy more stuff so that I can ship everything. I like shipping all that stuff. It's kind of fun. I mean, it's kind of like... You know, meditative. Help Cam meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Help meditate. Wish me luck. I have a test tomorrow. Good Everybody, luck, let's send Cam some positive vibes on the test. Let's send some. I don't some want them anymore. Cream vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's hope if she it's gets. Team cream. I want them. Let's hope she gets all the grammar and syntax correct on all the terms. Well, thank you. Godspeed. Alright, bye everybody. Bye. And now I wait for the Twitch delay. Then they keep waiting because I'm lagging. Goodbye, everybody. Ah. YouTube. Ah, man. How you doing? YouTube. I wonder if this is even going to make it to YouTube. Who knows? Things have been nuts. YouTube. Things have just been so out of control lately. You wouldn't even believe it.